Hello all. Um, we're having a couple of technical difficulties, which is why it's, um, we've been a bit late. But it's really good to see so many people joining in. Um, so this is our first webinar um, of what we hope is an ongoing series of webinars. Most, um, most towards the end of every month on a Friday, we'll be putting on a webinar and we've got lots of exciting themes in the future to be thinking about. This morning, just a quick note to explain a bit how this will work. Um, we've got a couple of people who are going to be presenting. Now, in the control panel on the side of your screen, you'll see that there's a little box with questions on. If you click on the arrow next to that box, it drops down and you can actually type a question in while the presentation is going on and send it in to us. So you don't have to wait till the end for if you've got any questions. If you've got any problems with um, the uh, IT or making it work, you can send a message by raising your hand on the, uh, by your name on the, on the list of attendees, and Diliana will try and help you while we're getting on with the presentation. We'll send out all the slides and a link to the recording later today when we've got it all together, and, um, and then we'll, we'll send out bits of news, and we'll also send out information about the next webinar. So, online today, hopefully, if we can sort out the technical bits, are Miro, hello, and, and Innes. Hi, everyone. And, and John, who is trying very quickly to make his computer work, and myself, Nick. Um, the four of us have um, been trying to get a, have got a presentation together, um, and it's all about really making a start. I guess what we're going to hear from is two examples. The first one from Miro, um, talking about work in Slovakia, and then the second one from John, talking about work in Scotland. Uh, they're both examples of what's happening nationally in a country, and then some local success. I think everybody understands that deinstitutionalization is a really big job, and it's not as simple as just closing not as not as sorry about that um it's not as uh uh it's not as simple as just um closing places down it's actually a lot more complicated than that so we thought we'd start by talking about some success and for store and some stories about what it means for individual people so without further ado i'd like to introduce um introduce you to uh, Miroslav and over to you Miro. Okay, thanks. Uh, good morning, good day to everyone. Uh, okay, I will just uh, share a presentation about uh, what was happening with the uh, in Slovakia. Uh, I think that you cannot see my presentation. I will Start it uh, here, give a minute. Um, okay, yeah, you can see it now. Uh, we can start with next uh, slide, Nick, please. Okay, so just a uh, quick information about Slovakia. Slovakia is a little country in the middle of, uh, in middle of the Europe. We have around uh, five million inhabitants, five and a half million inhabitants. And there is uh, quite a lot of people uh, living in institutions, especially in social care institutions. Uh, you can see, and you can see it a little bit later, uh, that uh, almost 83% uh, of all people who are in uh, social services, so they are uh, living in a uh, whole year residential services, and uh, there is very few uh, daily services or irregular services. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here are just some uh, quick statistics about Slovakia. We have around uh, 50,000 uh, users of social services, uh, around 30,000 uh, people is, uh, are people with disabilities, and uh, around uh, 29,000 people are elderly people. And uh, yeah, there is, uh, as you can see on, in other numbers, so you can see there, there is around 
15,000 people uh, or persons who are underwent of uh, treatment for psychosis, uh, around uh, 10,000 people who are uh, taking antidepressants, and uh, there is around uh, eight and a half uh, thousand of people who are deprived of uh, legal capacity. It's uh, around 50% of all people in Slovakia who are uh, deprived of legal capacity. And uh, there is uh, quite a lot of uh, institutions which we have. There is uh, uh, only 255 institutions who are uh, who have capacity lower than uh, uh, who have capacity bigger than uh, 40 people? Uh, next slide, please, Nick. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, altogether there is around uh, 500 uh, facilities in Slovakia. And uh, here on the picture you can see that uh, we have facilities. Uh, uh, maybe half part of them are smaller than. Uh, uh, 40 persons or 40 places, but uh, there you can see that uh, we have quite a lot of uh, uh, institution or facilities which have more than 100 places. And we have around uh, four uh, facilities which have more than 300 uh, places there. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of uh, institutional care in Slovakia. Uh, next slide, please, Nick. And uh, yeah, uh, this is a basic timeline about what we did in uh, on national level in Slovakia with DI. Uh, there are uh, uh, the first uh, DI processes which started in Slovakia. So they were there were in the uh, 90s, and in the uh, uh, year 97, there was the first. Uh, closure or the eye of uh, child care home in Slovakia, which, which was uh, made by uh, NGOs. And uh, the first partial DI of institutions or uh, DI projects made by NGOs, they were made uh, from uh, year 99 to 2001. And there were uh, two institutions where we tried to do DI, it was uh, social care home in Hotkoce for around, there was around uh, 100 people living there. And the second one was in Kralovce. After that, uh, the NGOs or NGO with the name uh, Social Work Advisory Board uh, made uh, other projects on a regional level. And it was in uh, Banska Bystrica region. And uh, we did it there, uh, three DI projects. Uh, I will speak a little bit uh, later about one which is the example on a uh, regional level. And uh, what uh, was the trigger? Everything until 2010 in Slovakia, which was done in a DI era. So it was on NGO initiatives. It was not any ministry special activities there. But in 2010, Slovakia ratified CRPD. And uh, at the same year, uh, European uh, Regional Development Fund was stopped. The money from European Union was stopping to Slovakia because uh, European Commission said that we used that money for to support and create institutions. So uh, there was a problem on national level with uh, financing. So uh, the government decided to do something with it. And in 2011, uh, Ministry of Social Affairs prepared a DI strategy and a national action plan, which should uh, start DI in social services, also in, in alternative care on a national level. Uh, we did in, uh, in one year, we did uh, several good paper materials, which uh, the government is using still now. And uh, after some struggles in 2003, uh, 2013, we started with a uh, national DI project, which was uh, uh, which was partially successful. Uh, there were around, I will have some more information about the project in the next slide, but there were uh, 10 uh, institutions which were attending education, trainings, and uh, some visits, uh, and uh, learning about how to do DI. Uh, this project was uh, ended in 2015, and since 2015, uh, there is not so uh, 
Mekče movement on DI area in Slovakia yet, but we have also uh, national priorities, which is uh, what is uh, the document which is made by uh, Ministry of Social Affairs. And uh, one of the national priorities is also to do DI, and the second one is to support uh, development of community services, but everything uh, what we are saying is mostly on the paper. So uh, there is not so many activities yet or today. Uh, can we go to next slide? Yeah, these are uh, some basic information about uh, what that national project uh, uh, was about. Uh, as I said, it was 10 institutions across Slovakia which got training. It was quite intensive training and uh, very stressful for institutions. Uh, we did there uh, 26 community meetings in municipalities with uh, people uh, who were living in municipalities, with uh, users of services, with uh, all other offices and uh, public providers there. Uh, there were around uh, 400 people who were educated. Uh, it was it were professionals from institutions. Uh, 22 persons with disabilities were employed during the process. We had uh, three conferences and uh, there were around 12 different courses for professionals which were uh, trained. And uh, what we managed in that project was that we have now eight specific publications for professionals. They are about uh, managing the change, about universal design, about supported employment, and uh, there is methodology for uh, preparation of transformation plan and uh, other things. So the, these are some uh, quantitative uh, results of the projects. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, and this is uh, the basic point of the presentations. Uh, what we have in Slovakia and uh, what we can see that uh, or we can see that is positive and uh, what was done in the last years. Uh, as I said, we have very good written materials uh, or strategy of DI on one side is uh, very good written, but there is missing uh, exact deadlines to uh, shut down all institutions. There is no exact uh, information about the resources and financing, but the philosophy of DI and what it should do is well written in uh, in this material. Uh, as I said, we have a material with name National Priorities, which is uh, basic materials for community planning and conceptions and the regional level. And the ministry is saying that uh, the basic uh, national priorities are to do DI and to support community services and to have focus on the quality and support uh, people in uh, marginal uh, communities. So uh, we have a, a good uh, or DI is part of uh, operation programs uh, in uh, ERDF program for investment and also in uh, USF uh, program for human resources. We have their specific goal, which is uh, which should support the AI. But in reality, there was or there is uh, no program or no project which was uh, using the money for the AI yet. Uh, and uh, yeah, there is a good written partnership agreement between uh, European uh, Union and Slovak, where uh, the AI is one of the goal and one of the ex ante conditionalities. So. On the paper, everything looks great, and I think uh, it is a good thing, but uh, implementation is uh, not so well as a paper, but the papers are written very good. Uh, but we have also very good examples of uh, good functioning services on cork or community services. We have an uh, agency. Uh, uh, in uh, Žilina region, which is supporting people at uh, community level, we have uh, several uh, uh, centers for uh, early interventions, where are, which are providing good community services for families with children uh, till uh, seven years. There are uh, several uh, 
daily centers on community levels which are going, doing uh, good services. And uh, we have a uh, few uh, provide, social providers like Slacking, I will talk about them, which are providing also good services for uh, adults with disabilities in a community and were part of the I process. Uh, what is uh, other good example is that uh, now in uh, our legislation in social services act we have suitable selections of community services we have their uh, services like uh, support of independent living uh, for people who are living in uh, in uh, own homes uh, but yet this is new social service uh, and now i think we have around four or five uh, social providers who are providing in slovakia this service uh, we heard there uh, good possibility Good, also good other possibilities for community services the problem is that the financing of the community services is uh, not so well like uh, financing for institutions but the selections is there uh, we have experience with the first national project uh, when we did uh, several legislative and non-legislative proposal to the government and to the ministries and uh, what is uh, one of the good things which we have in our legislation is that uh, we have a person-centered uh, oriented uh, quality standards in social services which are focused uh, in one part uh, quite hard on a human rights approach and uh, our legislation or uh, social services act is going from human uh, human rights approach so um, when the ministry will start monitoring quality of standards so it can happen that uh, they will need to say that uh, there is a lot of uh, violation against human rights in uh, institutional uh, social services uh, next slide nick please uh, what we are uh, missing a little bit is that uh, uh, or not a little bit quite well, is that uh, the implementation of these strategic documents, which are uh, well written, is uh, not going so well as we awaited. Uh, there is no sustainable and stable financing of community services, as I said. Uh, quite big problem is also assessment system and uh, prevention, that the assessment system uh, for services is uh, quite complicated and it's not focused on uh, person-centered approach and there are not uh, or there are very few prevention activities uh, there is a uh, quite big lack of uh, networking between different departments and ministries and main stakeholders uh, everyone is uh, working mostly individually they are not uh, uh, cooperating together uh, the same thing is also between municipalities and regions, and uh, this is quite a uh, problem to implement uh, DI on national level. Uh, locally, uh, DI vision is not shared across professional users and community, neither public. So it's because that we are missing uh, quite a uh, lot of support in uh, information about what is DI, what it should uh, bring, and what is independent living, and so on. Uh, uh, there are uh, changing attitudes and values in process in institutions, but they are very slow and challenging. That uh, the people in institutions, uh, when we want to change the paradigm, is going very slow, and uh, it's because mostly that we lack uh, a lot of trainings and educations on that level. Uh, we do, we don't have yet no real way to ban establish of uh, new social services which are with institutional culture there. There is ban only for one service. There is, uh, uh, in legislation, uh, there is still possibility to register new social services until uh, with uh, the capacity of places uh, until 40 places, uh, but it's not enough. And uh, the biggest problem is that uh, there is quite big lack of community-based alternatives and services. Uh, next slide, please, Nick yeah and uh, on local level i will just speak about uh, uh, one good example 
and its social services home in Slatinka. Uh, in Slovakia, this is uh, the only one social service home which managed it in uh, uh, many years to get out all users from old castle where, where they providing social services. As you can see on the pictures, uh, it was old castle, uh, which was uh, not in the community. It was uh, in a small village and uh, there were no integration at all. Can we go to the next slide, please, Nick? Uh, yeah, this is a little bit the way which they, uh, the colleagues in uh, Slatinka did. Uh, the institution was created in the uh, 50s and the capacity was uh, around uh, 70 persons. It was uh, for us mostly institution for children and uh, until uh, from 50s till uh, 90s, in 40 day years, there was no any uh, uh, work with the quality, with the life and so on. But in 90s, they started with uh, humanization of uh, services. Uh, they were improving uh, environment and living conditions because they had uh, a lot uh, a lot of beds in uh, the rooms. I think there was around uh, 16 or 20 beds in the room and so on. In 90s, they make new roof. Uh, they wanted to renovate castle. They had some reconstructions of building and park area but uh, still there was a big isolation of most of the years. But uh, uh, as I said, in uh, early 2000s, uh, in 2004, a uh, social work advisory board, uh, is, uh, NGO, which started with a uh, pilot project in uh, Banska Vistrica region uh, to support DI. The name of the project was Transformation of Social Services with the focus at uh, employment and social integration integration of users. Uh, so uh, uh, our organization, we did their monitoring and evaluation of social services focused on the quality. And uh, this was the trigger for starting uh, the transformation in uh, Slatinka. Uh, they wrote a transformation project and uh, from 2004 until 2007, they had several education and trainings for on em all employees. Uh, they had uh, written uh, the transformation program and they started to do community services in town, uh, Lucinets, which is nearby. And uh, uh, they uh, cleared to move out from the institution all user in the year 2012. I will show it uh, in a slide a little bit later. But uh, in 2000 and, uh, from 2013 till 2015, uh, they started to do new social services in field. Uh, the, they are one of the providers who start, uh, who was the first in Slovakia to start with support of independent living for four users in their own flat in the city. Uh, they were part of the national project of DI, and now they are supported by a foundation of uh, social foundations and. Uh, they are uh, trying to uh, do more community services. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, this is the slide when you can see uh, how the process was uh, done, uh, the process of moving uh, users from Old Castle to the community services uh, was done. It was uh, in years from 2008 until 2012. Uh, we, are, we are just saying it's uh, only partial DI because uh, uh they are trying to do also new services now but as you can see so they didn't have any special resources they didn't have any money from european union they didn't have any money from government so everything what uh, they did was that uh, they used the money which they had in own budget and now uh, they rented and buy it uh, by it houses in the uh, city of Lucianets. So that's why you can see that uh, they moved uh, quite slowly users from uh, institutions. They started with six users, after then uh, in, uh, it was uh, nine users. And uh, until 2012, there were no users living in the uh, old castle building, but still there are uh around 15 users who are living in uh, one little bit uh, house which is in the area of that castle and uh, they want to stop with uh, providing the service in that area and move the service to the city 
can we go to the next slide? Yeah, and uh, in this slide, you can see uh, how they are providing services now, uh, what kind of services they have. In Slovakia, this is a sm small map of the area where they are working. And uh, as you can see, uh, most of the houses uh, or services are in the city of Lučenec, which is quite big city with, I think, around uh, 30 or 40,000 uh, people living there. They have daily centers in, uh, they have uh, supported houses, they have uh, uh, terrain, uh, service uh, which is uh, called in uh, support of independent living and they will start with a new house in a small city of Filakovo. So now there is no user who is living in institutions but they have users also in other services. Uh, but that, uh, most of the services are uh, providing uh, with the field work that uh, social workers are going uh, between the houses and but they will uh, change some uh, the houses which have uh, bigger capacity. Can we go to next slide? Yeah, and uh, finally, the results of uh, this uh, DI was, uh, or the, this example was uh, that uh, they developed new community services in uh, the area of Lučenec region. Uh, they improved quite uh, quality of the living or quality of life of uh, the users. It was a big improvement uh, when we compare it to the situation which was in the castle. Uh, the, the goal of uh, organizations is that uh, they want to support people in 14 houses and flats which are owned or rented by organization or by users. Uh, they started with uh, support of independent living service. Uh, uh, some of the users which, are which were first uh, to get out from institutions so they are living now on their own and uh, flats and they have only this uh, uh, support uh, in the houses so uh, they manage it quite well uh, in the community and uh, they will provide new social services in the local area like social advisory for families and so on and the employees uh, got the new competencies. They now know how to uh, support people in community living. Uh, can we go to next slide? And I think uh, the best uh, uh, presentations about what they did in these years is to see two uh, movies which were made by the Foundation of Socia. Uh, with the name Simply Happiness and Simply Happiness 2. It's about uh, the users of Slatinka and uh, they were talking about how they lived in institutions and how they are living now. So you can see these two movies on the uh, links there. And uh, for people who can understand Slovak, so you can uh, see also other video, which is about, uh, uh, which are the users of uh, the institutions talking about their life uh, and, uh, in uh, these days. So this will be also a good example for you to see what was happening in Slatinka. So next slides. And thanks for me. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be ready to answer it. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Miro. Um, this is um, Ines speaking. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it was very informative um, about yeah, yes, the, the work you've done in Slovakia. Um, do we have any questions from the participants? Uh, if you see, um, you can write your question in the little box. Um, um, yes, we have something from uh, Kamil uh, from Greece. Uh, I'll read it out to you, Miro, and then um, if you can please re okay. respond. Um, so Kamil says, very interesting presentation about Slovakia and the DI process. What happens with personal assistance? It wasn't very clear if the services uh, are personal assistance or something else. Also, are the houses shared by many people or they live alone unless they choose differently? Uh, thank you, Kamil. Miro, do you mind answering? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, 
regarding personal assistance, this is, uh, uh, I see it uh, like one of the problems in Slovakia because uh, uh, personal assistance, it's uh, not social service in Slovakia. It's uh, financial benefits under uh, other law. So, uh, and uh, people can ask for personal assistance, but there are several problems to get personal assistance if you are user of a social service uh, where you are living in Slovakia. So uh, most of the users, they get support uh, from the staff of uh, organization. Uh, they try to get some uh, personal assistance for some of the users, but the labor office uh, uh, is refusing it. So they are now uh, trying to get it on uh, uh, on the court and uh, they are trying to communicate and it's quite problem because uh, yeah as I said personal assistance in Slovakia is uh, social benefits it's not social service and uh, the most people who are getting personal assistance in Slovakia so they got only few hours and uh, there is not so good financing about it and um, one of the user uh, or uh, users of uh, this institution uh, for example he's a boy in the wheelchair which uh, need quite a lot of personal assistance so uh, labor office said to him that he can get only one hour personal one hour personal assistance per day so it's uh uh, personal assistance is uh, quite a uh, hard thing in Slovakia to achieve and uh, but there are uh, users uh, of personal assistance which started last year with a new movement to get better condition for personal assistance in Slovakia we will see and uh, I think it should be social service not only beneficial uh, financial aid so I hope I answered that question. And uh, Miro, the can you just answer the second half? Yes, please. Yeah, this I want to answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the houses, uh, the most houses which are owned by institutions, they are shared with uh, other users. But some of the users who are living in the flats, so they are living in their own flats. They are uh, several pairs uh who are living together uh, when because they choose it to live together they are uh, and uh, i know that uh, one of them they want to be married and so on so uh part of the users are living in own flats and they could choose uh with the them uh, they live but the other users in uh, some institutions they are living together. Uh, that's why we are saying that this is only partial DI because one of the goal is that all the users can uh, choose where they will live and they want to have more flats and uh, more users in community. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Miro. Um, if the participants don't mind, we will move on to the next uh, presentation, which is by uh, John. Um, Dal Rimple, I probably completely mispronounced that, uh, from Scotland, um, who is going to speak about the process um, in, in Scotland, um, because we are a little bit behind time. And then if you do have any questions, either for Miro or for John, please uh, post them uh, into the question box and we'll get to them later. So I will give the word uh, to John. Um, John, can you please try to speak? You should be able to. Uh, I unmuted you. John, can you hear us? Sorry, we seem to have a technical problem. Um, Sorry, uh, uh, my network yes. was going uh, out. Uh, once again, can you repeat it, Nick, Ines? Uh, no, I'm. I was. I was trying to give the word to John to speak, ah, okay. uh, but um, we can't. We can't hear him. Um, sorry, John is trying to. I uh, I muted him. Um, sorry, everyone. Um, let's say make this for the moment. So if he can click John. on the microphone. 
Um, sorry, everyone, there's some technical difficulties. Uh, Diliana, uh, Diliana, do, Diliana, do you have Diliana, any? do you have any? How to help How John? To help John? Well, he needs well, to he needs to himself. That's been unmuted. It was. Yes, you're there, yes, John. You're there, John. Hi. Can you hear me, Nick? Yes. Go yes. for it. Go yes. For it. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about um, the closure of um, what were called long-stay hospitals for people with learning disability in Scotland over a 10-year period, uh, 1995 to 2005. Next slide, Nick. Hello. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Next slide. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. It is. Oh, you have. I can't see it. Um, Sorry, I'll Sorry, go. I'll go. Nick, can you share us? Great, we can see it now. Great, we can see it now. Okay. Go for it, John. Go for it, John. Yeah, I'm just up. I can't see the slide, so I'll. Um... Okay, I'm on the okay, second, second slide. Yeah, I'm just. Bear with me two seconds, I'll bring up the presentation. I'm just bringing up the slides now. Okay, here we go. So, um, Personal my personal experience. Yes, my personal experience then through this process, uh, for the first three years I was the project manager for the learning disability project in Glasgow and that was uh, trying to close a place called Lennox, Cla Lennox Castle Hospital to the north of Glasgow and then between 98 and 2000 I was the director of a support providing organisation and it was looking to develop and provide support services for people in uh, North Lanarkshire coming out of two other hospitals. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. So, in 1995, there were about 4,000 people living in 13 learning disability hospitals. Um, and the, the word hospitals gives the clue to the fact that these places were run by the health service rather than by the social work service. Next slide, please. Yeah. Yeah. So here we see just a kind of illustration of the 13 hospitals where they were. You'll see they're mostly congregated around the central belt of Scotland, um, one or two further north. Um, but that, this is where the, the 4,000 or so people lived um, at that time. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in 1995, um, there were a number of health boards within which these hospitals were located and these health boards uh, administered the hospitals. Um, Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, there were uh, a number, a small number of regional social work departments, um, as you can see down the left-hand side there. Um, and these were the kind of parallel organisations for social care. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That, that was our starting point in 1995. Um, I just wanted to touch on the fact that I guess what we were trying to do is not rocket science. There's only a, a few things that you need to get right in terms of um, deinstitutionalization and uh, progressing with that work. Um, one of which is obviously respect for the individual for the equal adult status of the individual and for the human rights of the individual. Um, 
really hard to get that 100% of the time and 100% across the whole service system. And without that, we, we struggle. But um, that's one key element. Next slide. Yeah. yeah. We need to, I guess, understand that uh, we're not trying to do something about special needs that people have. Um, and unless we recognize that we all share the same human needs, then we'll always struggle to get deinstitutionalization mm -hmm. right. So, next slide. Yep. Yep. Um, and the, so, respect for the individual, uh, respect for the fact that people have the same needs as, as everyone else, and thirdly, the competence required to deliver the right type of support and the right amount of support to make sure that those those needs are met. So, as I say, I, I don't think it's rocket science. I think it's fairly straightforward what, what we need to do to get things right. Unfortunately, I think what happens when you try and develop a, a large-scale deinstitutionalized program across a whole country um, is that you run into all sorts of filters that prevent you from getting those three basic competencies in place. And I'll talk a wee bit about how, how they impacted on us um, as we went forward in the areas of national policy, local strategy, administration, bureaucracies, issues of time and money, and the erosion of trust. Next slide. Yeah. yeah. So um, if we go back to 1995 in Greater Glasgow um, area, the, the Health Board and the Social Work Department of Strathclyde Regional Council came together and developed a joint learning disability mm -hmm. project. Um, the health service was split in two, so there's a, a purchaser bit the health board and a provider bit, the NHS trust. So there's complication from the beginning there. Uh, trying to work alongside the social work department to develop um, this. And, and so what was established basically around about that time was the capacity to commission social care for people moving from the hospital to the community. Um, uh, and associated with that was the, was the, an associated transfer of resources, which uh, required a lot of negotiation and partnership working. Next slide, please. Yep. Yep. So a project manager, and that was me to begin with, was appointed from the social work department. Uh, there was a, already an assessment team at the hospital. Uh, they'd been there for some time. They hadn't been particularly effective. They'd gone a bit native in terms of their attitude towards people leaving the hospital. New people arrived in the form of a commissioning team to work alongside them. And it was my responsibility to chair and, and, and organize a kind of uh, joint working with other middle level managers from the health service, together with my social work colleagues, um, to try and get this, this work moving. And we reported to an interagency project management group on a, on a regular basis. Next slide, please. Yep. yep. I think what we failed to understand quickly enough was that we had no parallel capacity to commission housing. And uh, this wasn't a situation where people were going to move into houses owned by the institution. People were going to move into houses in local towns and cities, and uh, that housing had to be provided by housing providers. And um, we, we sat around for a long time wondering um, where these houses were going to come from, and, and eventually we realized that we had to take um, action ourselves to make sure that the commissioning capacity for housing was uh, created alongside the commissioning capacity for social care. Um, and so what's called on the slide there, the Home Link team was created where housing professionals uh, joined us in our work at the hospital and they went out and talked to other housing providers to, to try and uh, get alongside the social care, the, the housing that people would need. Next slide. 
So, um, we were keen from the outset to make sure that people had security of tenure in the housing that they moved into and that there was a proper se separation of the function of landlord on the one hand and support provider on the other. That was not always plain sailing, it led to lots of uh, debate and really these were matters of principle which people struggled to, 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 to reach alignment on at various points in the process. Next slide. Yeah. yeah. So we started the work in 95 in the context of a kind of policy vacuum. Um, there was no policy to close hospitals. There was nothing that said that one local strategy was actually better than another. There was a general sense that we should be moving towards community care in inverted commas, but in a very vague sort of way, no particular incentives for that to happen. And I guess that allowed a kind of uh, status quo to exist for a long time where people were happy just to by and large persist with the institutions that were, were already there and to have a very gradual approach to um, deinstitutionalization. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that changed round about 2000. Um, the Scottish Parliament had been created. Um, it had responsibility for health and social care on, on, on a Scottish basis. And around the, about the same time, a national learning disability policy document called The Same As You was published. And included within that uh, policy document was the intention that all long-stay hospitals should be closed by 2005. So this was quite a, quite a radical shift. Uh, it was hard for local health and social work agencies to ignore. Um, there was some financial strategy around bridging finance and resource transfer funding to make this happen. And so from about that point forward, we had some impetus behind the, the, the deinstitutionalization program nationally. Next slide. Yep. yep. So um, I think it's, it's interesting, I'm thinking about the, the, the first presentation today, it's interesting to think about two sides of the same coin here, that as people are leaving institutions, we need to be building up local community services. Um, and I, th I think one of the problems with our strategy locally was that um, all the focus was on getting people out of the hospital by a certain time, using a certain amount of money to do that. Um, what was happening within the community was altogether more vague. Uh, so the, the hospital closure program had money allocated to it. There were target numbers of people to discharge. There were target time scales. At a community level, um, it was uh, as you were really as before the the hospital closure program was became national policy. So. Uh, one of the lessons I think we learned from this is that we, we need to have the same kind of intensity around both aspects of the process. And I think there, there are clearly parallel issues there in, in the, the presentation from Slovakia earlier. Next slide. So one of the problems we had was just the sheer administrative complexity. Um, one of the things that happened, next slide please, Nick. Yeah. yeah. Um, at the point where we started the process, we had 16 health service boards and 11 social work departments. We had no hospital closure program, as I've said before. But if we move forward one year, next slide, we yeah. suddenly have 32 social work departments because local government was, was reorganized. And um, that that just added a whole layer of additional complexity and difficulty, not just were there many more social work departments to, to liaise with and link in with, but also um, there was that transition period from, from a, a, a kind of regional 
approach to social work to a, a more local approach to social work. And as a result, uh, time was lost. There were lots of delays as, as people moved about from one um, bureaucracy to another. Next slide. Yep. Yep. Um, in the period 98 to 2005, then um, we were starting to kind of get to, I mean, that, that takes us through to the end of the process. So we had health and social work administered in Scotland. It was now legislated from Scotland. There were still these 13 learning disability so-called hospitals and um, no policy of hospital closure until the year 2000. Next slide, please. So if, yeah. I, yeah. if, if I try and take that from the perspective of Lennox, kind of just thinking about the administrative complexity of all of this, and I guess one of the lessons to learn is somehow to, to simplify these administrative arrangements. But in 95, we had 250 people in the hospital. The hospital was administered by Greater Glasgow Health Board. It was situated within Strathclyde social work area. Strathclyde social work area, however, also included three other health board areas. Next slide. Yep. Yep. Um, so the same year, most of the people who lived in the hospital came from Strathclyde, but some of the people in the hospital came from every other part of Scotland. Um, and there were also people who originally came from Strathclyde who were now living in every other hospital in Scotland. And part of our project was to find out about those people and to think about how we might bring them back to their own home community, but also to think about the people who were in the hospital from other parts of Scotland and how they could be helped to return to their local area, their local families. Complicated further by the fact that in the centre of the country there was this thing called the Royal Scottish National Hospital, which had been developed for years as a national facility. So you can imagine a large number of people, 250 to 300 people living there, um, and all the problems of kind of disaggregation of that hospital and those people back to their own localities. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. So a year, a year into it, <clears throat> and the, the, the hospital is now situated within East Dumbarton Social Work Area, not Strathclyde Regional Social Work, work Area. Um, and the, the Greater Glasgow Health Board Area also contains parts of other local authorities, so Glasgow City, West Dumbarton, East Renfrew, South Lanarkshire, North Lanarkshire. Um, this is just to convey some of the, the administrative uh, difficulty we had to encounter. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 we'll move on to the next slide after that one, Nick. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mommy. So administratively very complicated, um, and because there was an, an, an emerging national policy. Um, which quite rightly tried to think where, where, where would it best be for people to leave hospital and return to. Although we were only dealing with up to 4,000 people, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem uh, you know, uh, uh, too difficult, it, it became a very difficult and complicated uh, process. Made worse by far too much emphasis on money. Um, and very, very disappointingly, professional people being mostly concerned to talk about money a lot of the time, um, trying to work out how much money they could hold on to, how much money they could pass on, how much money they could save, um, in quite a macho kind of way with, with lots of interagency conflict arising out of debates about money. Um, and also, well, a, a level of kind of um, paradox in the whole thing that it was, it was being argued that some people should leave an institution basically to move to another institution um, because you know, it would be argued that, that this 
the people who were 60 and over, they should maybe just move to residential homes for older people or nursing homes for older people. It's the thing that was spoken about earlier about high capacity, low quality institutions. These were available in the system. They weren't hospitals. They were already administered in the social care arena. And so uh, lots of debates and arguments about was, and obviously not respecting the human rights of the individuals concerned, um, it was frequently argued that they, they should really just move to these um, cheaper uh, places that were already there and had some capacity. And this is despite the fact that everyone knows what needs to be known about the quality of this kind of service. Next slide, please. Yep. Yep. So, um, as well as the kind of spend as little as you can, there was also a very much of a kind of hurry up message. Timelines were important and they, and they did help to get the, the work to happen. Um, bits of project management are always helpful things. However, um, carried to an extreme, that can often lead to um, people leaving hospital before their services are properly organised. Um, uh, and I think that, that hurry up message carried to extreme and combined with spend as little as you can let, did, did have a detrimental effect on the quality of the work undertaken. Next slide. Yep. yep. And so what then happens is that trust erodes between the various agencies and people doing the work. There, there's not a shared vision. If we go back to my three original sort of pillars of good practice, um, some people are trying to hold, in the, as this pro process goes forward, some people are trying to hold on to those pillars of good practice around human rights, about human needs, and about the competence that needs to be developed. Um, other people are trying to um, just get as many people out as quickly as possible. Um, and let's not bother too much about the quality. We can always do something about that later, would be, would be the argument of, of, of some people. And this wasn't just the health service having an argument with the social work department. This would be me having arguments with my colleagues within the social work department. Um, so the no consistent vision. Um, Although it was articulated, it wasn't particularly held and um, acted upon in in day to day practice. Next slide. Yeah, yeah. So th this slide here just gives you a picture of the type, the dates at which uh, the various hospitals closed. Um, from some hospitals that closed quite early on in the process, even before there was a national policy, that all hospitals should close right through to the ones that um, were a bit late in closing, uh, didn't meet the target, like Kirklands and Merkiston, and another couple, Lynn Bank and Dunfermline, Arrow Park in Ayr, which still exist. Um, they call themselves different things. I think Arrow Park calls itself a resource centre. Um, and Lynn Bank, I think, describes itself as continuing health care. So it's a very mixed, it's a, positive in, the, in up to about 75%, I would say, in the sense that most of these uh, damaging institutions were closed within a 10-year period. But the, the, there's a kind of persistence of the institutional model. And the next slide just picks up on some of that. Um, yep. Yep. The, 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 there is a kind of enduring residential institution mindset within the system, uh, not notwithstanding the the historical commitment to to deinstitutionalisation that I described. So you have you still have NHS assessment and treatment units, which quite quickly get clogged up with people who stay for uh, a long period of time. You have campus-style developments within the grounds of institutions. Um, more and more talk about the need for core and cluster developments, which congregate people within uh, certain areas of, of towns and cities. 
specialist behavioural units, which are rarely specialist and don't do much about the behaviour of folk to help them return to community living. As I've said earlier, a, a, a far too uh, far too ready a, a, a use of nursing homes as alternative institutions. Let's let's move people from um, one institution to another, and I suppose in the current climate of austerity, etc., many professional people very quick to make the argument that perhaps we should return to some sort of institutional provision because that's that's all we can afford now. So my final slide, uh, well second last slide, just um, that's a picture of what exists on the Lennox Castle site now. It's the the training ground for Celtic Football Club. Um, no expense spared um, there on on the site where very little um, was actually spent for individual men and women over over many years. This was an institution that opened in 1936. Um, at its height, probably had about 5,000 people living in it. Um, and so that's that's the present day Lennox Castle Hospital, um, which is an interesting sign um, of the times. And there's a link there on the final slide, just to uh, an article that. Um, capture some of the stuff I've been talking about in in this presentation. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank, Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, John. Uh, now, if we're clear, we'll go to the question. Yeah. Uh, so, we uh, so we have one from Maria from, Maria from I hope, can you, can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Yes. OK, so okay, the so question the, from Maria is, Maria is um, um, it's about the composition, the composition of the link. The, the the and she is and asking how the organization, organization was involved, who was involved, how did it work, how did it coordinate with the social commissioning? commissioning. Yeah. Okay, well, when we started the, the process, there were very few social care providers um, in the Glasgow area. There were some who'd been there for a long time. Um, um, and they were willing partners in the, the process, but they clearly didn't have the capacity to take all this work on. Um, so what we did as a, as, a, as a commissioning enterprise was to invite other organizations to establish services in the Glasgow area. Um, these were mostly charitable, not-for-profit social care organizations, which perhaps operated in other parts of Scotland or in other parts of the UK um, and they would come and talk to us and we would discuss with them what they might be able to do, what they might be able to contribute to the, the process and um, we would then establish a loose kind of contractual arrangement with them um, to help us, to help them get established in the city and to help people from the hospital uh, move to services that they might provide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Do we have any other questions? I understand I have a so I would ask you to take over, please. Over, please. We have a, we have yeah. a, yeah. Camille is confirming. Nick? Nick? Sorry? Sorry? Would you be able to take over from me? I have an echo. Okay. Yes. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. We've got a couple of questions, actually. One of the ones was, and maybe I'll ask you first, Miro, is... Um, uh, if there's one thing that you would um, you'd not do again, so if you were starting to, to do this again, what wouldn't you do next time round? So just like um, giving a bit of advice to people, don't do this. Uh, uh, I think uh, when I was, uh, when we were working at the national level, so one thing which I would do Another way is that uh, when we made strategy, 
so I would to try to have their uh, deadline and uh, exact financial resources. I think this is very important, not to have only strategy which is declaring something, but uh, you cannot use it in implementation period. So I think this would be uh, this would be the first thing, and uh, uh, I think this would be the uh, the most important thing. Thanks, Miro. And John. John's disappeared. Okay. Um, well, we'll keep going, Miro. Um, so um, another question for you um, was really um, just a question about... Ah, oh, John, are you there? Yes, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one yeah. thing... Yes, one thing... Yes, one thing yeah. yes, I wouldn't forget about housing. Um, <laughs> and it seems fairly basic, doesn't it? But it, it really was quite an important thing that... Um, because we were so keen that people would have their own houses, their own tenancies, that they wouldn't be still living in health service properties, or uh, our, our failure to act on the housing as quickly as, as we should have done was was quite a big one. Uh, we got there eventually, but we lost we, we lost time, and there was unnecessary delay as a result. Thanks, John. Um, I'm muting and unmuting because there's a bit of an echo on some of the calls. Um, a, a second question would be um, really, uh, and to you, Miro, first, would be around staff and workers. When we've talked about this before, people have talked about it being quite difficult sometimes to get people who work in institutions involved and, and thinking positively about deinstitutionalization. What kind of things did you do that really helped the staff in institutions actually, you know, get involved and think it was a good idea? Actually, uh, yesterday and uh, day before yesterday, we had in Slovakia a meeting uh, workshops, uh, which was made by uh, FRA, Fundamental Rights Agency, and. Uh, there were attendants from uh, institutions uh, which were part of the project and uh, there was discussion what was the most helpful for them uh, and uh, uh, when i can say generally it was uh, trainings but the most important thing or which was helping what was helping them was to see other practical examples in a of community services also in Slovakia and abroad. They could be visiting uh, services which are providing community services or services which did the DI process. We had uh, several visits uh, to Czech Republic to uh, institutions which were uh, closed and uh, which did transition. So I think these two things were most important trainings and supervision and uh, to see good examples abroad or also in own country because they can it's better for them to see once and to talk with the people who did the same thing and uh, not only to hear it from some uh, trainers and lecturers thanks miro and john are you there john's gone again Hi, John. No, John's gone again, I think. Hello. Ah, here we go. Hi, John. Here we go. Hi, John. Right, OK. Uh, I agree, training, um, and, and not just kind of theoretical training, but um, very much kind of hands-on practical training uh, that relates to the people that the staff are working with. Um, showing people alternatives to institutional living um, that, that can inspire some people. I think, it, I think out of that group can emerge some, some champions within the institution for this to happen and, and so working with those people um, and help working with them to help 
inspire some of their colleagues to, to, to see things differently. I think we had a particular problem in that the the hospital was in a quite isolated place, well to the north of the city. It was a bit like the local factory. Um, you left school and you went to work in the institution, and therefore we needed to offer people a, a vision of a kind of career path for the next 10 or 20 years in some instances, and we, we weren't always very successful in doing that. Um, because it, it involved relocating yourself, even if you continued to live in the town where the where the hospital was, it was you, you were going to have to work some distance away from your your home. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Cool. What we'll do is we'll we'll crack on into the last couple of slides I've got just to um round it up. Um, I just say a big big thank you first to um to uh, to John and Miroslav, especially given the um, technical difficulties of involving Scotland and Slovakia, two sides of Europe, um, on one call, which I think um, it's been, well, we've, we've learned a lot how to make it work better. And thank you to everybody who's been um, really patient with us as we've got crack, cracked on. You'll see on your slide there that everybody's emails are on there. So I know that John and Miroslav and, and Innes and I, but especially John and Miroslav, are, well up for chatting more if people want to have follow up things they've heard um, or they've got any questions we will send out as we go um, as after after we finish the webinar we'll send out the recording and um, and the slides and if people have got anything they want to follow up then please do um, we we'll just let you know, and by, by the time we get to the 23rd of February, we will be really practiced and really swift at this because we've, we've gone from Scotland and Slovakia, we'll be uh, speaking from the USA, the UK, and the Czech Republic. So there's nothing like giving us all a big challenge. Um, we'll send out the registration link to you all as soon as we've got it. Um, and we'll also be publicizing that through Facebook and um, through the newsletter, Enos newsletter, um, we really appreciate if you could share this um, this link with as many people as you know. Um, the, the the European Coalition for Community Living is is really just getting off the ground again, and so we're really keen that as many people as possible are, are able to join us and join in with the work that we're trying to crack on with. And um, so, if you can support us by sharing the presentation, sharing the recording. Um, letting people know about what we're doing and, and these webinars every every Friday, every last Friday or working Friday of the month. Um, we'd really appreciate your help with that. Um, we hope that we can really start to reach out to many, many different people. It's very hard work, the de de institutionalization as you've heard from Miroslav and, and from John. Um, and often it can feel quite that you're on your own, but I think being part of this community and part of this coalition is a really good chance to um, actually get involved and, 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 and hear what other people are doing. We've got lots and lots of ideas in the future. We want to do some things around children, we want to do things about inclusion, we want to do things about community and connecting people into their local communities. We've got um, another webinar at the end of March, which is going to be personal planning, which is work they're doing in institutions in Slovenia. And we're also going to hear from um, Kate Fulton from Australia, who's going to talk about community supports. It's one of the things that John was talking about being really important. So we thought we'd try and bring in every, as much as we can some, um, some ideas and, and work that's going on elsewhere in the world. Um, but we will keep you up to date with those in the newsletter. And um, so just a really big thank you from us all, um, from Innes, from John, from Miro, from me. Um, when I click stop, everything stops. So um, we will be in touch and um, we really hope that you found this useful and uh, look forward to hearing from you or catching up with you on the 23rd of February if we don't hear from you again. Um, and uh, thank you very much. So goodbye and we'll be in touch.